Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be talking about M.2 SSDs and talk about some common misconception pitfalls and traps that you could be falling into and whether or not you should buy one. Stay tuned. First and most common misconception I've seen about M.2 is that it is not an interface. A lot of people will think that M.2 is an interface and that M.2 drives are inherently faster than SATA drives. While this can be true for some M.2 NVMe drives, there are also M.2 SATA drives that are no different from your 2.5 inch SATA devices. M.2 is merely a form factor to which the size of the drive can be classified as. So let's start with M.2 SATA drives. These are small form factor versions of their 2.5 inch counterparts. They are mostly used for upgrading pre-builds or laptops as space is usually limited in these. However, if you are building a brand new PC or a custom built PC, chances are you don't want to buy one of these. You're probably better off with a 2.5 inch drive because the M.2 SATA drive will take up one of your precious slots on the motherboard, which could have been used for an M.2 NVMe drive. Moving on to NVMe SSDs. These are usually what people think about when they talk about M.2. They are extremely fast, up to five times the speed of traditional SATA SSDs. However, they also come at an increased cost, with certain models being three to five times expensive as well. This means that before you drop $500 on that new 960 Pro, make sure you have the right motherboard connections for it. You'll want a motherboard with support for NVMe socket 3 or PCIe Gen 3 times 4 connection with up to 32 gigabit per second bandwidth. If you have an older platform, anything that's not Skylake, Broadwell E, or KB Lake, chances are you don't have necessary PCIe connections for it. Sure, NVMe slots do exist on older Z97 motherboards, but those are PCIe Gen 2 times 2 speeds, which means you'll be limited to 10 10 gigabit per second bandwidth, even if you have something as high as a 960 Pro. You'd be surprised with just how many people are trying to run a 960 or a 950 Samsung SSD on an older 10 gigabit per second and then being frustrated at not getting the advertised speeds. In fact, if you go to user benchmark, you'll see that for 960 Pro, in addition to the normal standard distribution of drive performance, you'll see a huge outlier of a lot of people having worse than advertised performance. And there's a very, very good chance that all of these people are trying to run their 960 Pro on a 10 gigabit per second connection. Going a bit deeper into one of these results, you can see this particular user has an i7-4790K combined with a 960 Pro. What he probably didn't know is the Z97 motherboard he is probably using for the 4790K does not have the support for the full 32 gigabit per second bandwidth that the 960 Pro really wants. It probably only has 10 gigabit per second bandwidth and he is being severely bottlenecked and not getting at all what he's being paid for. In the event that you've already bought an M.2 NVMe SSD and you don't have the necessary connection, or if you want to buy an NVMe SSD and you don't have the necessary connection, you can always buy an adapter that converts an existing PCIe Gen 3 times 4 slot on your motherboard to an NVMe socket 3 to be able to have the 32 gigabit per second bandwidth. However, keep in mind that this will take up one of your pre-existing PCIe slots, so if you were planning to do SLI or Crossfire, this may be something that you want to take into consideration. And finally, even if your motherboard does support the full 32 gigabit per second bandwidth for an M.2 NVMe SSD, doesn't necessarily mean you should always buy one. In fact, in most cases, even then you should still buy a SATA SSD. This is because, say your budget is something around $1,500, it makes really no sense to spend $300, which is about 20% of that budget, on an NVMe SSD, which at best is going to be marginally better than a SATA one for day to day use. On the other hand, if you're going to be doing 4K video editing or heavy content creation and you need a scratch disk for it, then an NVMe SSD is going to be very beneficial. And that about sums up this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future uploads. Thanks for watching and have a great day.